So I got some Project 2020 cards. I've been collecting these, uh, I would say, since around maybe card number 60. At least that's where I think my first card comes in. Um, here's an Urmsy Jeter. This guy's interesting. A lot of his cards, the player looks like it's, it's been disemboweled. This is the Jacob Rochester Henderson, I believe, right? Yeah. I... Um, my plan here is I'm just picking up what I like, and probably I have one of every artist and I think one of every player that's... Oh, no, I don't have a Ted Williams. King Saladin Gibson. Oh, this was the card... Oops. This was the card that... Uh, uh, well, this was the card that <laughs> was the coming of the apocalypse. Uh, it was very... Very funny and entertaining following the blowout cards forum up to the release and then thereafter. Um, this Keith Shore Griffey, which now could be had for like a dollar. Uh, I think I saw one sell for a dollar plus shipping on eBay. I like the card. I bought one copy of it. I paid 20 bucks. Um, but that was an insane print run. Here's this Andrew Teal. Do I have that right? Yeah. Jeter card. Nice. Looks like a canvas painting like this one. You know, a lot of these uh, early, the earlier cards, people are like focusing on, at least on eBay auctions, you know, low print run, low print run. I don't think the print runs are all that low. Even the, I think the Tyson Beck Gooden is like 1,300. Um, the Ichiro, or no, maybe it's less. I think the Ichiro is like 1,300 or so. But some of these newer cards, their print runs aren't that much more. And so what's going to happen? My opinion is I think those early cards, especially when the set has come and gone, will drop dramatically. I don't think they're going to hold their value. Um, I don't think they'll go down to twenty dollars either, but I don't think, for example, an Ermsey Trout. Well, I don't know. I just feel like it's uh, once the fat is worn off, people will move on to other things, and um, it's just a fun set to collect. And what I've been doing is basically, if there's one card that I happen to like, this is grotesque, good. And if there's one card, only one card I like for that week or for that release, I'll pick it up individually on eBay save a couple of bucks because it adds up uh, $2 here, $2 there. But if it's a two-card set, then I'll buy it direct from Tops. This one, I believe, is F dot. F dot, right? And we got to get to know these guys based on their style. Jackie. It's a cool-looking Frank Thomas. This was Natural, Natural. Um, Maze. Yeah, so uh, I think lately, you know, the print runs have been in like the the two to three thousand range typically. Um, you know, from a uh, value standpoint, you know, the, the ones that are over ten thousand, and I think uh, not long after the Griffey was released, you start seeing. I mean, all the Trout cards are high print runs, and then several were like in the twenty, thirty thousand print run range, I think. But those will probably be below MSRP. Um, but the ones now, I think if if the, if the print run is below say five thousand, those are I think they'll at least hold their MSRP value of twenty bucks. Fuchi good, and I like this one quite a lot. You know, I didn't like. Uh, I think the first card he put out was the Kofax. Could be wrong, but it was just this big empty face, and I was like, ah, oh, it's awful. <laughs> but some of these other, where it's not quite as, uh, I don't know, not as noticeable. Maybe uh, doesn't stand out as much. I picked up a few of the Fuchi. Uh, uh, cards. Here's another grotesque. This is cool. Ichiro. So I don't know if I'm repeating myself. We're only four minutes into the video, but it's like, I don't know. When, when this is all said and done, I'll take a look back and think, you know, will I finish a player run? Will I finish an artist run? Uh, fill in the blanks. Uh, there's a good chance of that. You know, when I started collecting or when I was thinking about collecting this set, I was leaning towards either Gooden, Mattingly, Jeter, and Griffey Jr., um, I think it's a good chance that I'll end up deciding on Don Mattingly. Um, this is Keith Shore, Kofax, really interesting artist, this guy. It's, it's just an interesting set. Um, I'm even buying some of the old Man Allen cards. Uh, some that actually appeal to me. Are they worth 20 bucks? Probably not. But, um, again, this is a set to collect, I tell you, I think, you know, I made some posts about these investor videos and the stupid faces they're making, and I, I don't know what people are thinking, but I think what set me off in that whole thing was somebody had posted a video called How to Invest in Project 2020, 
I'm like, are you kidding me? How to invest. And a lot of those people lost their shirts. So, uh, you know, live and learn. There's no investment opportunity here. And, you know, uh, by the way, this is a really cool Ermsey uh, Henderson. You know, these card values in general, whether it's, you know, these or whether it's even, you know, cards now, regular baseball cards, football, sport cards are going through the roof. And you have a card that maybe were $500 one day and now, oh, my God, it sells for 3000 eBay. It's like, oh, you got to sell that card. You know what? Um, I don't, you know, I'm, I don't sell my cards, but even if I did, I'd be really wary about selling cards like that, that volatile on eBay because of their ridiculous uh, return policy, which is like six months. So I know what's happened. You know, someone buys a card. I think with Project Twenty Twenty in particular, you buy a card for say two to three thousand or or whatever, and then before the card gets released, the price goes down. People aren't paying as much for it, and or they get it in their hand and they want to return it for some some made up reason. Um, who wants to deal with that? I like this one. This is the old man Alan Mattingly. Um, so that's my that would be my biggest concern in selling. You know, really volatile stuff on eBay. Um, this is Tyson Beck. Because people can just return stuff. Just say, oh, yeah, the case is scratched or, oh, something happened. You know, I don't know. Um, because it's come up with some of my cards. People have come in and say, oh, you should sell that LeBron, you know. But now even LeBron's cards are dropping a little bit. It's crazy to see a card like, for example, Dr. J, the rookie. It was going for eight to $9,000 maybe less than a month ago, and now it's selling for $4,000. Um, but also, maybe part of me says the people that are paying eight thousand dollars for that card are probably the kind of people that don't really care if it's worth four. You know, they they don't care that it's it's like they find that money in their couch cushion, and so if it goes to four grand, who really gives a crap? At least as far as they're concerned, right? But for most people, that's a rather substantial, you know, on paper profit loss, I guess. Uh, here's Don Mattingly. Um, here's an example of like a high print run card that's really not worth. You could buy this for like five bucks. Uh, I think it's got a twenty thousand plus print run. This is Mister Cartoon. Probably my least favorite card in the set, uh, this Rivera. Uh, but I do have a couple of these. Um, this one is, I think this is Blake Jameson, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. Blake Jameson. This is, uh, I like, I'm starting to like her stuff, Sophia Chang. I like what she's doing. I think maybe because she colors the borders and she puts a lot of stuff on there. It's interesting to look at. Tops did send me two. I think they sent me two Saladin Ryans. Tops is awful, customer service-wise. So I had ordered, I think, the Saladin Ryan by itself, and I decided I wanted to go back and get the good and grotesque. So I said, okay, let me order the two-pack, and I emailed Tops almost immediately to cancel the order. They didn't respond. Um, I got the two-pack in the mail. I thought, oh, great. They they did get the email. I didn't get the single card, but I didn't get a credit yet. And then the card shows up, and they didn't respond to two subsequent emails. So I was like, the hell with it. I'll probably just give the card away. It's like 20 bucks. Um, here's a nice card. This guy does really good work. I like um, I like his take on things. I like this one a lot, and I like the McGuire, which can be had quite cheaply on eBay also for, I think, $10. Here's a Ripken from Old Manolin or Old Man Allen. Uh, I have more on the way. I'm not done. Um, another Ermsey. It's really cool. So of the cards that came out early on, there's only a few that I like, but... Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned, but I, I feel like those early cards will drop in value because the print runs of these later cards are starting to approach the print runs of the early cards, and, you know, something's got to give. I think it's Andrew Teal, right? Yeah. Ricky Henderson. Naturel Nolan Ryan. This is a crazy card. I had to have it. Um, this Brett just looks like something exploded on the card. Really cool. And here's another Fucci. This one's the Maguire. This is Sif, right? Greg Sif. Yep. Jeter. Baller. He's got a pretty big following. So a lot of his cards are going to have the higher print runs. And this one I had to get because it's so ridiculous. This, I believe, was Sif also, right? Yeah. Gregory Sif. Here's a, uh, this is the Baller Mattingly. Maybe the nicest card in the set. And my OCD is getting the better of me. This is the one card I have. It's in an undersized. It's in a different top or a, whatever these things are, the magnets or something. Um, 
And here is Old Man Allen's Griffey. This is Salad. No, Saladin. This is a uh, baller. This is Saladin. Uh, who did this one? Mr. Cartoon. My daughter agrees. So I was, um, I like this one, but I liked Andrew Teal's original plan for this card. I saw it online. Uh, it looked fantastic. It looked more like the 84 tops, but, you know, had his, you know, different colors and different presentation. This came out totally different, but, um, Bob Gibson, Gregory Siff. And so I do believe I have all the artists covered. I think I do. Oh, no, do I have a J I might have a JK. I did order some JK5 stuff, but it's not here yet. Here's here's the first card I ever picked up from this set. I think it was card number 60. No, what number is this? 68. Keith Shore. I think what I didn't like about Keith Shore's early releases is that the players had a pirate hat on. And that just didn't appeal to me at all. So here's the one that I got a duplicate of that tops never just whatever. So I have an extra Salamine Ryan that I might I give it away eventually. I don't know. Here's a nice look. This is a great looking maze from Jacob Rochester, I believe. Yep. You can kind of tell his style. It's going to be tough picking a player run or an artist run when this is all over. And then here's the Brett from Keith Shore. So that's what I have for Project 2020. And uh, coming up, um, well, I, I got to cut this video because that kid is just uh, creating too much racket. So anyway, I had some more stuff to say. I'll save it for next time around. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll be back soon.